directors and staff from two these four missions greet the master in person for the Lunar New Year. Volunteers distribute daily supplies to the fire affected residents and care for their needs in Myanmar. 欢迎收睇大爱 Headlines， 我系 Ruby 吴，我哋一齐嚟睇下今日嘅内容。Directors and staff from two of these four missions went to Huanan Jin Si Abol to send New Year greetings to the master. Let's join them there. Members from two of these four missions gathered at the Jin Si Abol at Huanan to celebrate Lunar New Year. Members from the charity mission also sent New Year greetings to the master through a video. I hope the pandemic can be eliminated soon, and Ziji volunteers around the world can go to Jingse Abode to meet the master as soon as possible. Teaching with etiquette and educating with virtue, the principles of street schools will continue to cultivate young students in the new year. For the education mission, I think this year we will still integrate resources to gather our strength, provide innovative education to cultivate talents. Our colleagues will also cultivate students diligently so that they can learn a skill to improve their lives. Everyone has his own greeting words. Through explanation, it is known that New Yan means everyone works together to pass on the truth, kindness and beauty in the world. I hope that our four missions cooperate with each other to move forward so that people can have a pure mind and a harmonious society without disasters. The master mentioned that cows rely on grassland to live, so we have to cherish grassland, just like humans must protect the earth to be healthy and safe. For missions work together to show love inspiring kindness in everyone's heart and eliminating suffering in the world. In China, due to the pandemic, the government encouraged people to spend the Lunar New Year holiday locally. Jiangsu Tzu volunteers invited workers to go to Jinxi Hall to celebrate the festive holiday together. The children are following the volunteers to mop the floor and clean up the environment inside the Jinxi Hall. The parents are from other provinces and head over to Jiangsu province to work. To abide the government's suggestion to celebrate the Lunar New Year locally, they join in the reunion with Ziji. There are so many people in Ziji. I really feel like it's a big family. Everyone talks and laughs together. It feels really nice. Besides the festive atmosphere, volunteers also arrange for the parents and children to visit the recycling exhibition. The children are able to have a good time while learning more on environmental protection. I've learned a lot on environmental protection. When I head back home, I'll share them with my parents and also my friends. I'm very happy to be here. There are many people and friends accompany us to play together. We also go to see new things that we have never seen before. The activity which touches the hearts of most people was the tea serving ceremony. Some parents who are unable to head back home had this to say. When the children served me the cup of tea, I had a mixed feeling. It's truly hard to raise the kids and my parents are at my hometown. We're unable to have reunion meals. I feel that I owe them a lot. Thank you, Tsuji brothers and sisters, for letting my children feel the warmth of family. Volunteers have set up a warm and loving atmosphere so that everyone feels like family. Although they are far away from their hometowns, it still felt like home. In Malaysia, because of the pandemic, students in Sabah were unable to go home to celebrate Lunar New Year. So the volunteers and the professor specially made lunch boxes for them. There's a fragrant aroma emitting from the Tsuji Kota Kinabalu branch. Volunteers are preparing delicious dishes in the shortest time possible. University Malaysia Sabah professor QC Tech is a team of volunteer. This year, he is also celebrating the Lunar New Year away from his hometown. They are preparing the reunion banquet for the students who are also unable to head back to their hometown during the Lunar New Year. 
When Ziji volunteers have taken the responsibility of making the reunion banquet, I was deeply touched, and when I sent the message out to my students, they have a heart of gratitude. That made me truly happy. We thought of providing them a delicious Chinese cuisine, because the university only provides Malay cuisine. Volunteers prepared 18 meal boxes while also preparing pudding and some small gifts. They then send them to the students personally. I feel deeply touched and also the warmth of the volunteers. I would like to thank all the Buddhists who prepared this wonderful gift for us. Thank you, Ziji, for preparing the meal box for us on the eve of the Lunar New Year, and also special thanks to Professor Q for the collaboration. I hope that this love can spread into their hearts and it can make them understand the importance of this love. In the future, when they are treating their patients, they will then know how to step in their patient's shoes. Besides treating the physical illnesses, they must also learn how to heal the hearts of the patients spiritually. For these meal boxes, besides spreading the love towards the students, it is also hoped that the students can continue passing on the love to others in the future. Also in Malaysia, it is the first time for Tzu's Malacca chapter to make various new New Year decorations with recycled PET bottles, aluminium cans and other recyclables. Frontiers even made a great white horse card to let the public learn more about Tzu's spirit. Carrying the big white oz is like carrying Chuzi's mission. Malacca Chuzi volunteers started making the great white oz card in October last year. For those who give, they know the reason for what we are doing. I think everyone feels the Dharma joy, which is what knows as the most important Dharma lineage. We once again bring the spirit of Lotus Sutra into Malacca chapter so that everyone can understand the Dharma spirit and work on the Bodhisattva path so as to attract more people to do good deeds. This year is Chuzi's 55 years. Volunteers use recycled materials to make New Year decorations and even the lighting. The difference in New Year decorations between Ziji and others is that all we use are recycled materials, so everything is done by ourselves instead of buying ready-made ones. Since the New Year's decorations will usually be discarded after New Year holiday, so it is a waste of resources if we spend money to buy them and these recyclables can still be recycled after decoration. After washing nearly 3,000 bottle caps and sticking them to the recycled advertisement board, volunteers put the word of love and many small hearts on the Jin Si garden, covering the ground with love. On both sides, the large area of pink plum blossom is standing. It is hard to see that these petals and buds are handmade by volunteers. It's a pity if we throw the BD bottles away, we can reuse them and turn them into plum blossoms. It's really incredible. Volunteers also use PP straps to weave ends, symbolizing the emergence of volunteers who are united and persevere. There is also a well filled with PET bottles, just like the reality of ocean pollution. This is to ask people to reduce the use of plastics in order to make a sustainable earth. The New Year decorations are different from last year. Although everything has a story, they all encourage people to practice environmental protection. In Myanmar, a fire broke out in a community in Yangon in early February, and 70 families lost their home. Volunteers distributed late daily supplies to the affected residents while caring for their other needs. Everything was scorched black and the furniture was burned into ashes. In Myanmar's Yangon, a fire broke out at the local community. Seventeen families were affected by the fire. Upon learning their situation, city volunteers immediately head over to assess the damages. I heard one of the residents say that the fire was very big. They were unable to salvage anything in time. All they have are the clothes on their back. For some, they even didn't have the time to wear their shoes. All I can see on their faces are despair. Recently, protests have erupted in Myanmar, causing many shops to close down. However, volunteers have overcome all difficulties just to help the affected residents. They have prepared 22 types of foods and daily necessities to be distributed. We prepared utensils, blankets, mosquito tents, and also some daily supplies. These are the items they need the most after the fire. Seeing the happiness on their faces while receiving the supplies, we are happy too. 
The fire this time has spread to the neighbor's house. The first thought that came to my mind during the fire was to save my Zijing uniform because I thought of following the other volunteers to prepare supplies and distribute them to the affected residents. During the pandemic, I had no job. Now, after the fire, life has become even more difficult. Now I can only rely on the rights provided by Ziji to continue living. There are five people in my family, and I do not know how long it can last. For the affected residents, they are temporarily residing at the Tingang Yun School, which was built by Ziji. After distributing the supplies, volunteers continue to care for their needs. If necessary, volunteers will be back next time and care for them. In Zhanghua's Tianwei Township, Mr. Li, who is disabled, has young children and sells plans to earn mega income. Last year, the family home suffered a fire and was unable to make the repairs. After learning about it, two so volunteers rushed there to help them rebuild. Each city volunteer holds a present and says an auspicious phrase for the Li family to celebrate their moving day. It's such a fortune to have the two volunteers help us. They work in the hot sun to help our family clear out the garbage and debris remaining from the fire. When they helped rebuild, it was also in relays of volunteers to fix the roof. Rebuilding the roof, revamping the interior, each child has their own room. The water heater has been installed in the bath and kitchen has been redone. One cannot tell this house has been through a fire two months ago. Towards the end of last year, a fire tore through the home of Mr. Lee, who was disabled. Though no one was hurt in the fire, the loss of everything hit the low-income family hard. They have put 20,000 anti dollars, which was their earnings in several weeks, on top of the fridge, but was completely destroyed in the fire. Originally, Mr. Lee was depressed, but after we helped with repairs, he had a very grateful heart and smiled from deep with himself. Tianwei Township's chief is a Ziji member, and when the accident happened, he immediately reported the event to Ziji volunteers so they can help the family clean up and rebuild where necessary. Ziji brothers and sisters during that time really helped them, whether it was financially or manually. They were able to repair everything in such a short amount of time. Receiving help, Mr. Lee's family has also agreed to reciprocate by going to the recycling station to sort resources. With their home repaired, the family can live in peace once more. Okay. In China, Suzy Care recipient Guanyi He has poor vision and lives with her developmental delayed son. Dong Guan Suzy volunteers visited the family to help clean up their home for the Lunar New Year. Only one person at a time can walk through the narrow hallway leading to the kitchen. Inside the kitchen, the walls are spotted black and the smell is unbearable. This is the home of Granny He. She can hardly see with her eyes, and at home no one can help her clean up, so the smell is heavy. It's messy and dirty. Having congenital vision problems, Ms. He now only lives with her eldest son, who has developmental delays after her husband passed away. Her youngest son is a fisherman and is away at sea for long periods at a time with little pay. Thankfully, Tsuji volunteers have been caring for this family since 2008 and came to help clean up the home for the Lunar New Year. When I walked in, the place looked kind of sad. If I can help, I'll try. That kitchen smelled really awful. But after a few minutes, your senses are accustomed to it. These things are easy to bear if you switch your mindset about it. Not only Dr. Hu, who took time off from his work for three hours to come help the senior, but also a three-year-old boy is here to motivate the senior to take a walk outside for a breath of fresh air. Wishing the granny the best of luck, volunteers care for this family like their own relatives and promises to return again.
，每个人都是生水生汗，但是付出之后的那份快乐，只有做了才知道。Fujian's Tranzhou, 65-year-old Li Reizhen was bad-tempered and fought with her alcoholic husband frequently. After her husband suffered a stroke, she met Su Ji and started to do recycling. She even took her husband to do recycling with her. Now, her husband recovers and can walk normally. Their relationship has improved as well. As the recycling team sets off, Li Reizhen's keen eyes finds tiny details on the streets. Not leaving any resources behind. Seven years ago, her temper had brought her tons of trouble. In the past, I didn't do recycling and was bad tempered. When someone says something, I will immediately get mad and also get into fights with my husband. When we fight, I will break televisions, furniture, and utensils in my home. She often fought, broke her teeth, and was injured by an umbrella. She had to go to get massaged. A tough personality encountering an alcoholic husband. Both their lives are in pain, as they can't wait to get out from the suffering. In the end, her husband suffered a stroke, and everything changed. When I was little, my parents fought and I was scared. They were really bad tempered, fought a lot and were very loud. Now when they are doing recycling, they are happier and never fought. After encountering Tsiji in 2013, Li Reizhen watches Thai TV every day as she learned how to read. She also takes care of her husband on a daily basis while taking him to do recycling as well. I told my husband when I am busy, he can carry the recyclables for me, so he did it for me. Now he loves to do recycling. He told me that his leg got better because of doing recycling and that he doesn't need a walking stick anymore. In the past, this cage was used to raise chicken, but now it has turned into a recycling point. Less fights, more recycling. This family's relationship improved greatly through recycling. It has been three years since the death of Taiwanese aerial photographer Qi Boling, who has left behind more than 500,000 photos of Taiwan. His work has led to many reflections. Our current series allows us to revisit these images, bringing both the beauty and sadness of Taiwan's coasts. My father once said that he likes dancing a lot. The mountain is behind the river and the sea is in front. After shooting, he will make a special circle around dancing to end his work. Tanshui is a very good place. He would deliberately go around the estuary. The father's love for Tanshui left an impression on his son after Qi's death. The IC Foundation is specially located at his favorite Tanshui area. When visiting the foundation, we can see a huge picture of two big feet in Hualien's rice fields. This is a precious gift from Qi to Taiwan. This is the best picture to show he's risking his life in shooting. In the Qi Boilin Museum, there's a favorite photo of his son, who said that his father in the photo is handsome and brave. You open the hatch and then lean out on a thin-looking seat belt on your waist and stick your head out to shoot. Only in this way can you get the best angle according to him. I like this one the best, and it shows his courage. Father never showed the slightest fear when he was shooting. And do people in Taiwan still remember what Qi wanted us to see at high altitude? We have been recorded. We have the ability to understand what the environment has caused to us. The area where we are now entering in the exhibition hall is full of red lights. It feels like in a dark room which is part of your design philosophy. I've heard that this is Chi's treasure when he was alive, right? Yes, this is true. You can see how he wiped it. He never wiped me like that. 
It was the first gyroscope that my father bought when he was going to shoot a movie. The gyroscope set up in the helicopter is an important tool for stabilizing high altitude photography. She not only raised enough money to buy one, but also bought a second one, which followed him as he fell from the sky to the ground. After the death of my father, even though the plane burned down, the memory card inside was still readable. So it's not exaggerated to say that it was my father's trusted work partner. From more than 500,000 digital photos and negatives we summarized into themes such as the problem of cementation, fish farms, etc., and the jetty effect. We thought of this when she was taking these photos. Chi used his keen eyes to see Taiwan's environmental problems in the Chasing the Shore photography exhibition. The audience can not only see the beautiful coastal scenery from his perspective, but also his special touch. Things that Taiwan must pay attention to now, or things that have been forgotten for a long time, this is what we want to show everyone. For example, in overdeveloped coastlines that may not be visible from the ground. Brother Chi took this photo. It seems that the coast is protesting against us. The two sides are actually the ugly reefs of Daitan Ugly Reef, and we forcibly created a discharge channel to the sea right here. He has been engaged in aerial photography for more than 25 years. He has probably seen all the landscape of Taiwan. But if he sees such a landscape with geometric patterns on the ground during the shooting process, or that there are wild animals in front of his lens. He will become very excited. Chi's beautiful photos led him to recognize the importance of environmental issues. For example, the cause of land subsidence in the fish farm of Kaohsiung's Bito Township. Chi suddenly realized that behind this beautiful landscape there might be an environmental impact or environmental damage, which caused him to pay special attention to whether our environment was affected. He paid special attention to this when photographing ground scenes later. I think Director Qi is a very amazing person. He has a different perspective because in the past we probably look at Taiwan from a plain view. But now, when you look at Taiwan from the sky, you will find that Taiwan is particularly beautiful. Our environmental development and economic development must be well managed. Is economic development and environmental sustainability only a tug of war? At the end of the exhibition, a blank photo spot is reserved for the audience to think about what kind of scenery they would like to add. We hope that most people still see Taiwan as it's beautiful, and the scars can awaken everyone that our Taiwan was actually very beautiful and clean, and that they would like to resume Taiwan to its original condition. Will the future of the environment in Taiwan be beautiful or sad? Perhaps this is the last question that Chi Poilin is letting Taiwanese to answer. In order to strengthen students' concept of rejecting drug temptation, Yongzi Elementary School invited a drama club to perform an anti-drug play. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and see you next time.